Welcome back. My name is Jim Caseman, and we are talking about the four C's. We've already talked about don't compare, don't compete, don't complain. And now we're talking about don't compromise. All right, so let us look at some of the scriptures that have to do with compromise. And of course, we need to speak what? Truth. So we want to declare that we are uh, that we are children of God that only speak truth. So we want to rightly divide the word of truth. So then brings us back to 2 Timothy chapter 2 and in verse 15. Be diligent to present yourselves approved to God, a worker that does not need to be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. So we need, if you can rightly divide the Bible, then you can wrongly divide it. So let's make sure that we trust the Holy Spirit to help us to rightly divide it. Now, what I have done through the years, and I'll share this just briefly, that um, one way that I have personally just done this to make sure that I rightly divide the word of truth. So in other words, the, the, I always felt that the word of God is gonna, will help uh, divide itself. It'll help uh, explain itself. And so what I do is this. The major doctrines of Christianity should be found, there are seven witnesses. See, normally we say in the mouth of two or three witnesses so that we'd be established. But the way I do it is, the, there are seven witnesses. Number one, in Genesis, in seed form, that scripture should be. You know, like for example, uh, you know, the, the, here it talks about Jesus. And of course it talks about the seed of the woman and all of that. That, that is all in seed form, the, that basic Christian doctrine. And then secondly, of course, it, you'll find it under the law in types and shadows. And, uh, and for example, even, uh, even uh, 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 talks about Jesus, uh, even in, in, uh, back in, in Abraham, and talked about Jesus was seen walking through the halves with, with, with uh, Abraham and those blood halves as they were entering into covenant with each other in Genesis chapter 15. And then as you come into the law, you see that under Levit Leviticus chapter, uh, the, the book of Leviticus, it talked about five offerings. And these were all types of Christ, types of Jesus, the sin, trespassing offering, the sin offering, and the burnt offering, meal offering, and, and the peace offering. And so there were all, there were, or like we said in another session, there's over 300 messianic prophecies in the Old Testament. Some sources say over 350. And even Zechariah, and, and, and so then, that was so that either in Genesis, in seed form, number two, under the law of type and shadow, number three, would be in the uh, uh, Psalms or the writings. And of course, you take Psalms chapter 22. Uh, here's a perfect description of Jesus being crucified. That's a, a foreshadowing of he was really going to do. Then we could see number four, we should be able to find it under the, the what the prophets are saying or the prophecies. And of course, uh, it, and Zechariah even talks about Jesus being uh, 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 crucified. It talks about the, Jesus riding into Bethany under a, on a donkey and, and, and all of that, just in real great detail. And so that's a, a, a four. And then five would be in the Gospels as Jesus taught it. And then in six as the apostles uh, acted and taught and preached on it in the book of Acts. And that would take you to number seven. So that same thing, for example, let's take healing. You take healing, you can find it all the way back in Genesis. You find it under the law. You find it in the Psalms and Proverbs and the writings. And you find healing in the prophets. And you find scriptures on healing with the Gospels, with Jesus. And then you find healing in the book of Acts. Same thing, see? So you get seven witnesses. So that keeps you from getting out of trouble. All right. So rightly divide it. The word interprets itself. And don't build a doctrine on just one verse. You're going to get into trouble. People do it all the time. All right. And then in 2 Timothy again, now we get up to chapter 3 and verse 15 and 16. All scripture is given by inspiration of God and is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. So let's not compromise so that we can be thoroughly 
equipped for every good work. Now, in 1 Timothy chapter 4, I, uh, well, let's see. Yeah, 2 Timothy, I'm sorry. 2 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 7. And I come on right down here. Uh, what world? I'm back in 1 Timothy again. All right, 2 Timothy chapter 4, verse 7. Pick it up in verse 6. For I am already being poured out as a drink offering and the time of my departure is at hand. I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. I have kept the faith. Now let's rightly divide the true truth. We divide the word of God or the word of truth and let's keep the faith. Let's stay with the truth. Let's not wrongly divide, divide it. All right? I have kept the faith. You know, I, I, I even hear, so you say, if, if we rightly divert or divide the word of truth, we'll end up fighting the good fight of faith, we'll end up finishing the race, and we'll end up not uh, uh, contending for the faith and, and, and keeping the faith. Do all three things if we'll rightly divide the word of truth. All right, we'll contend. I've kept the faith, or like Jude 3 puts it, contended for the faith. I contend for the faith. I refuse to compromise. All right. Now, if we compromise, we open the door for the devil to come in, and you know what the devil will do. He'll steal, kill, and destroy. Just as simple as that. So you start wrongly dividing the truth, then you open yourself up to a spirit of deception. And if you don't correct that, or if you don't allow people to correct you once you get deceived, You'll continue to go on and more things will come and more deception will come and pretty soon you'll be so far away from God you'll just say, well, the Bible's not for today like some idiots do today. No. So you have to be careful that you do not allow yourself to be deceived. And so it's good. You know, in the council of many there is safety. Praise the Lord. <laughs> so uh, if, you, if, you God, if you think that God's given you a special revelation, remember one thing. He's going to give it to the rest of the body of Christ too, not just to you. So you need to check with others in that are close to you that you can really uh, know they're going to be honest with you. Bounce things off of them. None of us have a unique written revelation nobody else has. And the Holy Spirit will always bring the same revelation to the same, to the entire body. Amen. So stay focused on what God's called you to do and that'll help. Don't try to be somebody else or compare with others. Remember the four C's, you know, don't compare, don't compete. And of course, and don't complain for sure. And uh, now don't compromise. So understand one thing, the pay is the same for everyone, corporate and individually. So you don't have to compromise or compete with anybody. Uh, uh, we get our salaries by faith, all of us do. And so be it according to our faith. And, uh, God, uh, every, and, 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 and the pay is the same for everybody, whatever you can believe for. All right, so we have no reason to complain or get upset. Just stay focused on what God calls you to do. And with God, payday always comes. And he's promised to meet our needs infinitely beyond our highest prayers, desires, thoughts, hopes, and dreams through the new blood covenant. So may God your source. And you'll never lack in the spirit or in the natural. Amen. Well, we'll cut it off there. And uh, you just be blessed in everything you set your hands to do until the next time that we meet. Amen.